Hey folks, it's Frithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19. I'm just going to get our mowers hooked on so that we can mow the little field that's up there. And then I was kind of hoping that we would be able to... Um, well, see, I don't know. I don't know whether to make hay or silage. We've got the silage maker, the baler, over there, and, and, and the grass. But um, we don't have a wrapper. And a wrapper is, is kind of essential to the whole making silage process. And then I'm also not sure if we should be saving these bales of silage or if we should be putting them into, you know, just like selling them. Selling them would be good because it, you know, it's, it's going to allow us to get another chunk of money. Not a huge chunk of money, admittedly, because th th there's not much silage going to be made from that little patch there. But th there will be some. We got this one here who's now underway. We've got, well, one more pass down through here. It's just going to start going through there. That's the oats that we planted. That is our secret shame that is now being covered up. So once he's gone down through there, he will have sown over all of the all of the um, the oats that we planted and he will have uh, planted canola instead. This, this, this is a good thing. This is a very good thing. And he can carry on with doing that job. We should actually have a fair bit of seed left over, I'm thinking. And this is a good thing, because then we might be able to go and do that one. We could just lease this machinery here. We just borrow these items. And we can put the seed straight into that seed drill. We'll take that one out to field 11, which is that bad boy over there. We're up here doing this one at the moment. See? Oats right there. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Never mind. Yeah, that, that, that was my bad. Um, we go to field 11 over here and we'll plant that one. Um, shouldn't take too long to get over there and plant it. I think this is a good idea. I do think it's a good idea. It does mean that we've got to drag that one all the way back down to the shop again. But I do think it will be worth it. So we're just going to let that one carry on. We've seen it working last time. Um, we'll come back. We can just see it sort of take off going up across here. Because it, it does look quite cool, doesn't it? Um, it would be better if it was a slightly bigger tractor, admittedly, but it still looks cool. So he's going to carry on up there. There we go. It's 10k to start with. Slows down a bit when he gets over to the bottom of the hill over there. About as far as we can see at the moment is the limit of where it can go. 11k at the moment. It's not too bad. It's starting to slow a little bit as he starts to hit the hill. Okay, right. Leave that one go. Let's go to you. Get you over to that field over there. We can start our little mowing job. Right, the new field here, I don't think we've actually cut this one yet. We've got this bale of grass over here, which is currently in the way. So I'm going to... Nope. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you back because uh, I don't actually want you unfolding just yet. I'm going to push you down here so that you are out of the way. Like that. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to move that one out of the way. Then we can bring this one back over. And now we're going to unfold these things properly. We're going to go like that. And we're going to unfold you as well. And then you are going to run around the outside. And you are going to run around slightly more to the inside. But everything is going to be all tickety-boo and glorious and wonderful. We go back to there. So it's all started up. And it's all unfolded and everything. You press Control v And it lowers them both down. Like that. One after the other. Control V. Sometimes, if you've already got one lowered down, you press Control V. It doesn't Control V quite properly. Don't worry about it. Just do it again, and it'll then work. So I do get asked this quite a lot. How do you get both of them working together? It's a function in the game. It was a function in FS17. It's a function in this one as well. Control V together, and you get both of them uh, raising and lowering at the same time. So I'm just going to put that one to there. And we're going to back up, and I'm going to do that. This is probably not the, the best way to be going around the corner, but it, it works for us. If it works for us, that's all that matters. So then we can come down around here. This bit here, I'm going to swing right around the corner. This is going to leave a strip, which we will gather up next time. Come around like that. See, it leaves bits. And then I'm going to go along here. So we are, we're, we're taking in more than we would normally, or more than we'd really want to. So I'm just going to do that a minute, and then I'm going to go back, 
and I go back up through again. And I'm hoping I, I want to get all the grass. I want to be able to cut. I want full mower widths on this. And our work that we did for smoothing everything out seems to have paid off a bit here. It does actually seem to have paid off. Uh, oh, no. Uh, right. Control V. Is that going to lift it? Yes, that's lifted both of them. Because I lowered it back down again and then lifted it. It worked. So then I go up to here and control V and then you do need to slow down a bit when you're going into the grass but it will it doesn't delay between the two so it allows the first one to go in and then you wait just a little bit and then you can get the second one to go in as well with your control Ving and it does work quite nicely so then I do that control V I mean if you time it right it, it looks quite good because you you come out the end of the field and it lifts both the mowers up as they leave the grass as well which is quite cool so we put that one in and then it automatically lowered down quite nicely there pleased with that and I think I just had a tiniest bit of lag and I reckon that's because our um, seed drill up there is just turned round so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that I'm, let me just jump out of this one a minute and do that yes it turned round it started again it's on its way down the hill we're doing 18k down the hill this tractor is definitely too small for this seed drill definitely too small for it how are we doing on this so look at the job um so with the active job 27 percent. yeah we're definitely going to have a load of seed left over that'll be fine right go back to my tractor over here it's still running that's good and now this is the rough bit this is the bit that we weren't able to do anything to we couldn't quite get it to level out so i'm gonna just go over this bit slow like that Take it slow, and then it doesn't. I mean, it's still not cut it anyway. It's just being difficult now. It's just being really, really difficult. And we will go out long here. So if I go to, I get to there. I press Control V, and it does take quite a long time to lift the back one up when you come out. You don't want to be going full speed when you go into it up here because otherwise the back one doesn't lower fast enough. And then you end up, you, you miss little strips. And it, it does not look professional. Really doesn't. If you want the job to look professional, if you want to make it look really cool, you do have to do your timing just right. So I bring it to there, and then I pressed it literally as soon as the front mower left the crop. I bring you around here, and I lower both of them down. And now I'm just going to shunt around a little bit on this and see if we can get the all mowing done gonna let us so we've got some very we got some steep land on this bit haven't we if I swing you round like that and I go into it from this bottom side and just get that bit there we go so we have managed to gather it all up we've got this really rough bit and I don't like that I don't like that at all it's a shame that we've got that there but there is there isn't anything that we can do about it really so um, let's let's not worry about it too much uh, bring you back down here and then I can do a straight line across here and just tidy that bit up That'll look a lot better now Right the way through there And then we can do control V again. How many bales do you think we're gonna get out of this? I genuinely don't know at the moment. I would say possibly eight bales. I think maybe eight now it does depend what the current price is uh, we may only get like we're on the easy prices weren't we getting like two thousand dollars a bale last time we did this and if we get that at 16 grand that's pretty good uh but i don't think we're going to be getting quite that much I, I think it's going to be considerably less than that which is a bit of a shame but still uh, um i mean eight bales even at a thousand a bale is that's that's still pretty good a thousand a bale is not to be sniffed at we've got to get a wrapper though that we're gonna to have to go and lease a wrapper because uh, I don't I don't want to spend out the huge chunk of money to buy the wrapper because I want to use our money at the moment to make the new cattle pen over there and get things ready for that. We're also going to want the silage bunker at some point, which means we're going to want some more land so that we can put the silage bunker in and then we'll be able to do stuff with that. Um, possibly leasing like a Ponzi scorpion or something would be a good move because it means that we'll be able to get a load of trees all at once we can use the auto load i will 
this weekend, have a look and see if I can find a different auto load, the one that's actually got all the features working properly. It might, it might be my joystick, but I've had a bit of a play around with it, and it doesn't seem to be so that the... I'm not getting in any indications at the moment that it is the joystick. Right, I turn that one off, and I get that one folding, and uh, fold that one up as well. Bring these down to the shed and we'll put these away. So the next move is we want to rake it up. We've got the rake, we've got the baler, we've, we've got all of that. So we're able to go and do those bits. The only bit that we don't have is the wrapper. That's the only bit that's going to sort of hold us back on this. I'm going to back you in here a minute. Like this. And problem, I can lower that one, but I can't lower the back one. I can't lower this one. It, if you try to lower it, it unfolds. So you do have to just dump it like that, which is a feature that I don't like. I'm really hoping that that is something that is altered at some point fairly soon. I would like to be able to lower that mower down regardless of whether it's unfolded. It would be quite nice because there's also the odd... Well, we know that cultivator there, you've got to do it. It doesn't mean to say that all cultivators will have to do that too, but we do know that we do have to do it to that one. So I'm not planning on doing any... Um, hay this time but I am going to we're going to need that rake I'm going to put the weight on I mean, we don't actually need the weight at all for the raking and um, it's probably not I, it's, you don't want the weight on the tractor unless you actually got a, a, a use for it but it's such a small amount that it's not really worth the bother of hooking the weight on moving it, unhooking it, just do this field, and then putting the weight back on. Because for using the baler, you would actually want to use the weight. Um, this tractor, I don't think is that suited to the baler. We may have to use the other tractor for the baler anyway. So um, hooking it onto this one is, yeah, um, we'll see. Let's widen you out a minute. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We, we might be able to use this tractor for the baler, but I think we really, we want the other one. We want the, um, the case for that one. That was our baling tractor, wasn't it? Uh, lower you down and we've got a nice thick crop this time as well because we've waited for the grass to grow properly you got the two harvest stages that you can harvest grass at and when I did in my time lapse I made the mistake of cutting too early for I think it was the first cut um, and I, I cut it too early so I had quite a thin crop on the ground the second time round I left that one it was the one that I've only just recently done i left that one on the ground uh, i left it to grow longer and i had a really good crop out of that i had a load of bales i think we had like um 75 bales out of the field that i've got on felsbrun just around the house i've got the two fields there i've i've plowed them out a little bit bigger um but yeah set 70 odd bales off of that i thought that was a pretty good rate of return actually all things considered now what i'd like to do here is I want to put some hired help going on this. So I just want to bring that one down to there, and then I want to raise that one up like that. Okay. I'm getting a little bit of lag at the moment, which I'm thinking means that the hired help is turning the corner with the machine that we're using on the contract job. So let's go and see that one a second. Uh, well, maybe it was. I I'm not quite sure. It's chugging away up the hill slowly. It's doing the it's doing what it's supposed to do. That's, that's, that's what counts. And we're nearly halfway on that job as well. So I'll bring this one up here. And a lot of people tell me that I should put the hired help going. Um, if I'm going to use the hired help, I, I, I should use it right from the start. And that I shouldn't do any of it myself. I shouldn't do any outside rounds. I like to do one outside turn and then start using this just because it generally makes it a bit tidier. And what I do often do is, well, I don't often, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I'll actually bail up the outside round first and then go in and do the rest of it. I did do that on the last thing on the time lapse and they work reasonably well. I, I did end up sort of, it, it did see, come out okay. Um, it doesn't always work though. It doesn't always work and we've got this hill right here it's supposed to be that the um the, the hired help and everything is supposed to be better at figuring out what hills are too steep to work and that's why you 
see there where it moved the outside round? That's why you go all the way to the end of the field. If you go all, if if you take out, if you take up the end, the outside round, um, when you drop down with this one, because it moves the grass back so far, it actually works quite well. Uh, we need to keep it on hired help now because uh, that way it won't destroy the crop when we drive over it. Uh, but it comes over to here and then it lowers down and it throws that outside round right out behind it a long way and it does make a terrible mess so this is kind of a good rake but at the same time it can be a bit of a nuisance i mean it'll be interesting to see what this one's like when we get the fields that have got fences all the way around so it's got a collision mark all the way around um it doesn't turn very well it turns it always turns this one too sharp see how sharp it's turning there you can see it's now kicking the back wheels around and that's one thing I don't like about it, is whenever you put the hired help going with this one, it kicks the back wheels out. Doesn't turn it properly. And obviously that's going to be damaging the machine. It's going to be putting a huge amount of pressure on that hitch, which you wouldn't want to put on there. Uh, probably will completely bust the thing trying to shove it sideways like that. Um, so overall, I like this rake. I do, but I'm not at all impressed with the way this rake performs when you're using the hired help on it. Now, what have we got here so far? We've got four. This is the fifth run across, as well as the outside round. Um, not including the outside round. And we're going to go for at least one more run all the way across the field. So, are we going to... I don't think it'll be a bale a run. I think it's going to be two runs per bale. So, we could be looking at one, two, three, four... Yeah, maybe six bales. Maybe six bales on this field if we're lucky. I don't think we'll be getting much more than that. And then you're going to come on round there. Look, see, it's it's extremely rough ground right there. And the, the tractor is not very forgiving to the machinery when it's going out <laughs> and turning round on it. I'll let the hired help do one more pass because I'm curious what it's going to be like with the big lump there. Whether that's going to interrupt it, do anything strange. And so long as it doesn't, we we'll then be able to go and get our baler and be able to bale up our bales. Then we've got to go and we've got to get a, um, a what do you call it? A who's my thingy? We'll just quickly go up here and check that that one's doing all right. Yep, that one's doing just fine. Um, we're going to need to go and get a wrapper. We'll have to run up to the dealership, get the wrapper, bring that one back, and then see how that performs. So this here, is it going to gather it all up? So the rake is actually really, really good over the rough ground. I've noticed this before. It seems to work exceptionally well over the rough ground. What it doesn't like is the... Um, right, let me just stop that one a minute. What the rake doesn't like is the turns. See? It, it does things like that with turning, which you really don't want it to do. Um, we've got a little bit of hay there. That shouldn't affect anything. It, it, it shouldn't make any difference to it whatsoever. Um... Though we'll have to wait and see on that. With the baler, uh, not with the baler, with the wrapper, I did notice that you can no longer wrap hay. You used to be able to wrap hay. And I mean, it would turn it into silage. It wouldn't um, let you just go and uh, wrap hay and then have haylage instead. Uh, but that's, that's, that is kind of legitimate. You, you wrap hay and it does turn into silage. Um, it's, it's kind of a much drier variety of silage, but it is silage. And when I was at least with the square bale wrapper, I had hay there. It wouldn't let me wrap it at all. It just said this bale is not supported. Um, so it appears that we're no longer allowed to make uh, hay bales into silage, which is a bit of a shame. I, I, I was a little bit disappointed to see that happening. Let's lift that one up there. We'll run up this end and just do one pass down through here. Tidy it a little bit. I'll bring you two there like that. And down we go. Right, we've got a bit of a mess out on that corner. So I'll, I'll sort of bring it out like that, I think. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now we'll fold that one up. I'm not going to bother washing the rake. I'm just going to leave the rake as is. And we'll go and unhitch it. And then we can get our baler on. As soon as I've... Actually, I'm going to bring this one over here. We may not use this one very much more. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm genuinely torn about whether to keep it. Because I kind of like it. Because it is different. It's different from any rake that we've had previously in the game. Uh, we did... 
In FS15, we had a rake that looked very similar to this. It was a much, much older version. And it was one that you could both windrow and you could um, ted the hay with as well. Which is what the old ones you used to be able to do with those anyway. That was a feature that they all had. You, you could windrow and you could um, also um, ted the hay with them as well. So you could do turning or windrowing. It didn't matter. You could do either of them. Right, that's going along very nicely. He's going to turn around soon and then spin on his way back down the bottom of the hill. We'll leave you going. I'll let you carry on. Um, but it wasn't available in FS17. I think I did see somebody attempt to convert it, but it wasn't able to be converted properly. Um, and so it was only available for windrowing, I think. But I absolutely loved it. I used that in my old times... Um, series that I did back in FS15. It's a long time ago now. Long time ago. Uh, but it was great. It was absolutely awesome. I genuinely loved it. I've got straw in here, haven't I? That's not much good. I don't want straw. Oh well. What's done is done. Let's start you up. And uh, we'll start heading up the hill. So we're going to stuff in a little bit of straw into here. And so the first bale through is going to be straw. And then we're going to be turned into, we're going to be going into grass. So that one coming out there is straw, which is not what we want. But we'll live with it. It's, it's one of those things that we're just going to live with. And we'll take that one, uh, well, even that one. See, we don't have to take that one over and sell it. We can keep it ready for feeding to the cat, uh, to, well, feeding to the cattle, actually. We're going to want some stuff to feed to the cattle. I don't think we will. I think we will take all of it and we will sell the whole lot. We will just we'll just take the whole lot. We will sell it. We get rid of it all. We don't want to keep it. And we'll make some money out of it rather than trying to keep it and um, save it for later. We'll make more bales for when we need them for the cows. So I'll come down through here. Getting on the outside round. That's going to plonk. Nope. Actually, let's put that in a convenient position off round. It doesn't always do that. We've got our bale collector as well. That one's ready to roll. Now, this is the bit, is because it does the first thing that goes in there as um, the, the bale changeover, you, if you've got, like, a bit that's changing on the ground, like, you, you've got, like, multiple different options on the ground, you do need to be a little bit careful that you don't accidentally get one tiny little bit of hay in the middle of the field go in and start your bale off, so the whole of the rest of the bale has to be hay. Um, that, that would be a bit frustrating because there's nothing you can do once it's gone in. You can't change it round. Um, and it was annoying as well that in FS17 in that the last bit to go in would be what, that would be the decider for what the bale was. And that could get really annoying as well. But at least, you, I don't know, I felt you had a better chance when the last thing going into the baler was what decided the bale rather than the first thing going in, because you, you kind of paid more attention when the bale was nearly finished. Um, maybe that was just me. Maybe it was just me, but I, I did prefer it the other way. I got it, It's got to be said on there. I quite like most of the other changes to this game. There are a few things that I'm not that fond of, but the one thing that re I really don't like at the moment is this whole thing with the bales, where um, the final bit of crop going in is not the decider. It's the very first bit that goes in that is the decider of what the bale is made of. That is one thing that I don't particularly like. I would much prefer if it was the other way around. And we'll we'll see. Maybe it is maybe it's a bug and it's not actually an intended feature. I'm still hopeful that, that it's not an intended feature and that it is going to be changed. I'm gonna swing up round here. I know I'm turning a bit too sharp for a baler. Uh, I shouldn't really be turning this sharp. It's not a good idea to go quite so sharp with the baler because of the... Uh, well, with any machine that you got a PTO shaft on, you don't really want to be turning quite that sharp on it because it can... It would... Like, as, as it turns around, it could shatter the PTO or at least break it. And it's, it's not very good for it. It shortens the lifespan of it quite considerably. The sharper the corners you turn when you're running a machine, the shorter the lifespan of your PTO. It's, essentially what you're doing it's just just very quickly reducing the lifespan of it and it can make quite a difference actually when you when you have your machine o over time it can make a surprising amount of difference to a pto shaft 
A lot of people don't realise that. Uh, farmers do. Farmers know all about it. Most farmers I know have had a PTO give out on them while they've been using it. It never gives out while you're going straight. It only ever gives out when you're going round a corner. You, you're going round a corner for the umpteenth millionth time and suddenly you get this loud bang. And if you're lucky, it's just a loud bang. If you're unlucky, you get bits of shrapnel flying off as well, where it's just kind of disintegrated and gone everywhere. I've never had a window break from one of those, but I have had bits of metal fly around, and it did scare several years off my life. Um, I've only ever had it once. Only ever had it once. Uh, somebody that I was working with, we, we were riding in the baler, and he'd been having trouble with a PTO shaft on the old class 1200 uh, quadrant baler. Um, and it wasn't the one off the tractor. It was one of the ones inside the baler that took drive from... It was basically in about underneath where that coon sign is. Uh, basically, it uh, transferred the drive from one point of the baler to another. And it had come off and they'd had some trouble with it. And they'd put it back on and they'd... Um, I don't know, they'd put a bolt in or something. Um, uh, but they were checking on it periodically and I got into the tractor and he checked on it and then we rode up and down for about 15 minutes and he said we'll get to the end of the road and when I say that I don't mean like we weren't working in a particularly big field we had literally had about that far to go and he goes we get to the end of the row and then we'll just check this PTO shaft again and make sure it's all right he said that we went on about another 15 seconds, about to there, and suddenly there was this almighty bang from the back of the baler. My goodness me. It, it was a huge, off the, phenomenal noise. Banging and crashing. It was really going. It was absolutely going insane. And then it stopped. And he looked at me and he said, um, it couldn't have waited another 15 seconds, could it? It just couldn't have waited. And then we got out and we went and had a look at the damage. And it had really, it had absolutely beaten it to pieces in there. It, the, the thing had slipped off. Somehow the bolt had come, it, like it, it had worn it. And the bolt had like vibrated down across. And it was, it was, you know, it was fairly, it wasn't like a normal bolt. It was a shear pin, admittedly, we were using for it. But um, yeah, it, it had vibrated down across and it, it had really messed up that baler. It really messed up. So the baler was out of action for two days. And... We phoned up class. Now, by that point, the 2200 model for the class quadrant had already been released. So, and we had quite old bailers. Um, but nevertheless, we phoned them up and we said, look, we're not entirely happy about this. Well, I didn't. It was nothing to do with me. Uh, he phoned them up. He told me. He said, we're not entirely happy about this. And they said, yeah, it's an own weakness. We know. Um, we're not going to pay for the damage that's been done to it because it's way beyond warranty. But we are going to come out and retrofit your balers with a different shaft and a, um, I don't know, they, they were going to do something different to it just to make sure it didn't happen again because it was a known weakness with them. So they they didn't offer to, you know, pay for the repairs for free. They did they did do the repairs, um, but they didn't do them for free. They, they had to pay for the repairs. Um, yeah, I'd say that you were fairly well tied up here um 95 percent you're nearly done you are nearly done on this job so let's let's spin you around like this and what i'm going to do is i'm going to run you up to the top of the hill just like this and uh, what i'm hoping is that one pass down across the field will finish this job out nicely and then we need to get a wrapper we want to get the wrapper back so that we can wrap up our square bales how many have we done how many square bales have we done we need to go to statistics over here. We created bales. Twelve. Twelve bales. I said eight. And then I downgraded to um, six. We got twelve bales off of that. Admittedly, one of them is a bale of um, straw, which is not quite so good off of the grass field. But um, still, eleven bales of silage that we'll be able to wrap up and sell. And then we've got one bale of straw that we'll be able to sell as well. Overall, I don't think that's too bad. That's not too shabby. Uh, I'm just going to press H on that one and let the hired help do some of it. I'm going to come into there. Is that going to... Okay, it's not... It, the overlap is fine. It's got just the right overlap on it. That's good. Um, 
so anyway, yeah, they, they did repair it, and what the, the, the repair thing that they were going to, the, the replacement bit that they did is basically they took the shaft off, and then they put a different shaft on, and then they put a bolt that went all the way through or something like that. I'm not entirely sure what they did, but um, they made it so it didn't happen again. Uh, but yeah, it was... It was quite bizarre because we, we said this and it was literally we, another 15 seconds it would have been all right. And the guy that he was in business with, they didn't like each other very much. Um, and when he was talking to me, he was complaining about why he didn't just stop the tractor and get out and go and have a look at it. He should have gotten out and he should have gone and had a look at it when he thought about it. And I said, look, we had 15 seconds to finish the end of the field. And then it was done. We were finished the field. So we can check it over properly while we're folding up the baler and moving to the next field. Nope, nope, that wasn't good enough. And he, he was adamant that uh, if it had been him, he'd have stopped the baler right there and then when he thought about it. And he'd have checked it and he wouldn't have waited because that's what responsibility is all about. Um, I didn't work for him for very much when he was there because uh, the, the guy, basically the partnership dissolved. Um... I wasn't overly surprised, I've got to be honest. But, it, yeah, the, the, the partnership dissolved. That They didn't stay together as partners for very long. And I didn't go and work for the guy after the partner left him. Not for very much. I did work for him for a bit, admittedly. And it, it, wasn't, um, it w wasn't the most entertaining job I've ever had. Uh, but I didn't stay working for him for very long. I don't actually need to do very much here. Because then we've got the contract finished. And I know that I'm leaving a bit of a, a mess here on the end of it. But... I don't care. Honestly, I don't care. I just want to get that last one. There we go. Contract on field four finished. So you're done. I can fold you up like that. As we go racing across the field over here, I want to head that way. And we're going to fold this up as we go. And I'm not going to return it yet because I want to get this one down to the dealership and unload the seed before I get to this point. So, um, yeah, we've got that one. Hang on a minute. Where's the next? It's field 11, isn't it? Right. Slow you down a minute and stop. Field 11 is up that way and we are up here. So if I dump the seed there, that's too much of a round trip. I want to come out and I want to go along there and I want to drive up there. And I could dump the seed on this corner. That would be all right. 2,800 litres. Or we could just go straight back to the dealership. Either or, really. It's, um, it, it doesn't really matter. We need to get to the dealership with our other vehicle. What I want to do is I want to get across this bridge before any cars turn up. Because if we get cars trying to come the other way, that means the only way past them is to go backwards or over them. That's literally... That, those are your two options. Backwards or over the top of them. And I'm going to struggle to go backwards with this. This great contraption right here. I'm genuinely going to go struggle to go backwards with it. So over the top would be our only other real option. You know, Realistically, that would be about all we'd be able to cope with. I'm not sure that would work out very well for us either. So let's bring this one up here. We'll see how the cars cope with it. I've got a tree on that side. It missed the tree. I'm impressed. I thought it was going to get hung up on that tree, but it didn't. I genuinely thought the lower branch on that tree was going to grab us. Let's see what this next one is. Is that one going to grab us or not? Nope. That one's up quite a bit higher, so that one's all right. Uh, keep on going. Keep on going up here. If we can get it right down to the dealership, I'll be quite happy. Oh, there's a car coming there. Just as i got to weave around a tree on that side. Bring you around here. Now, this is, this is going to be the interesting bit, is getting across there. So long as we don't do what we did on the way up through. Remember, we, we got it hung up. Um, so we can either do this sensibly and go on the road, or we just go in around this way. So we want to go slow. We don't want to go too fast. I'm going to bring that in around there. And then just hope that the train doesn't nope no trains no trains have turned up this is good this is good this, this is all really good and right so now i want to unload the seed so i go to you I swap over to you and select seed unfold unload just press i like that is thrown the three pallets out there that's all done with which means then i can jump out of that tractor and we're done with that that's not a bad rig really i did quite enjoy using that and then we go to you. Uh, least cost minus two. We get 16 and a half grand. Collect. There. Now we go down to this one. So field 12. No. 
Not field 12. So field 11. There, 21,000. That's more like it. With corn. Uh, borrow items. Don't accept contract. The least machines are waiting for you at the shop. Remember to fill them up first. So this one needs corn. I don't know if the stuff we've got. Have we got a front weight to go with this? Apparently we don't warrant a front weight. But we do have a rather wonderful Deutz Far. What is this? This is a Series 9. The 9310. 9310 we've got right here. Deutz Far 9310. Not a bad little machine. Not really. I do like that the hired help will now actually do hired helping uh, without us having to go and do daft things like... Right, I can load that one up so it is allowing me to fill the seed despite the fact that everything is closed up over the top of it. Oh, 1,600. Is that all I can put in there? Of course, row crop planters. Yes. The one thing with row crop planters, you never seem to be able to put very much in them, can you? Okay. We need to go on up to... Where was it? Field 11, wasn't it? I think it's field 11. Uh, we've got 63k top speed on this one. So a 60k box on the tractor is... That's not bad. Uh, field, yeah, field 11. And that one's all the way up here. So we've got a little bit of a trip. We may have to come back and grab the rest of the seed and then spin around and go up there again in order to get the rest of it going. On up past field eight. And if you notice, somebody pointed this out on one of the, I think it was a Facebook page or a forum or something. Um, you see the direction that the wheels are on the tractor. That's the, the best direction for the tread to be for when the tractor moves for it to dig in. Uh, it gains a better grip. The wheels on the seed drill here, they're the other way around. They're on backwards. And that is actually quite deliberate. Uh, because if you've got a land-driven machine, if you've got anything that's land-driven, um, it needs it to be on backwards in order to for the land drive to be able to work properly anyway. Uh, but that's not the only reason. It actually reduces the wear on the tyres. They wear out a lot slower... If you've got them that way round compared to having them the same way round as the tractor. So there's a double reason there for that. You use two reasons that you... Ooh, okay, it's a little bit bouncy up there. Uh, I do like that it is actually split in two though. It's, it does have like... Uh, wow. That is really, really rough ground on that edge. If you buy this field... And you want to put the two together, you're definitely going to need the whole leveling tool thing, aren't you? Right, let's go to there. And do that. 1,600 litres. How long is this going to last us? Yeah, I don't think we're going to do this entire field on the 1,600 litres. But we'll get a good chunk of it done, I think. We will get a good chunk done. We've got field 9 up here. That's a, I think that's a bailing job. Is that actually got one on here? We've got uh, sowing, harvesting, field nine baling. We do, 12,100 there. Uh, that is silage bales there, if we were to go and do that one. I'm not going to do that one, though. I don't really want to. So, at, oh, wait a minute. Oh, we have got corn. Oh, thank goodness for that. I was, I was, I was just looking at it. It's not gone to 1% yet. Why is it not gone? To, we're not making that same mistake again, though. We have not made the same mistake again. It's now going through. The corn is it's being used up at steady. There we go, 1%. Right, that's good. It's being used up at a steady rate, but it's not ridiculously fast. It is going to be okay, I think. Um, we'll let that one move on up. It's a very low squat kind of seed drill, this, isn't it? It's quite. It seems to be quite a different shape to a lot of the others. And that, I'm assuming, is an air blast fan on there. But no, um, the, it, whether it's land-driven or not, uh, but it, I mean, if it is land-driven, it helps it um, dig in better going that way. Because it's being dragged along, it's giving resistance on the ground, um, that helps it dig into the ground better, and it stops it from sliding forwards. So you will usually find tra will tra any trailed implement the wheels are on back to the tread is the different is uh, the opposite way around to the tractors and that is quite deliberate it stops the wear on the machine it um prolongs the life and if you've got anything that's land driven on the machine it also actually helps the machine to work better uh, it's less likely to slip it's less likely to be missing pieces anything like that 
Um, so there is a very specific reason that those tyres are backwards compared to the tractor. And that is quite normal. That, that is a normal procedure. You would normally do that on any working implements. Right, that's working really nicely there. Um, we're going to go now over to this bad boy here. And we go racing up the road. We need a wrapper. That's our next job that we want to do is we want to get a wrapper. We want a square bale. I'm just going to check in the garage a minute and make sure that we don't actually have a square bale wrapper. Um, I don't think we do. Right. Uh, least items here. So we've got... We, we, we get, we're getting a bit of a collection here for least items. Probably we'll be selling... We could return that one and that one fairly soon because they are costing us a bit of money. Uh, we don't have anything there. Let's go back to our owned items on here. We've got everything else. We've also got the Archizan right there. But we do not have a... No, we don't. Right. Okay, so we, we do need to go and get the wrapper. Um, somebody has told me, a couple of people have told me now actually, that the stole log grab, the one with the attachable straps, that I consider to be the pinnacle of log grab achievements in FS17 has been converted over to FS19. It is throwing up a few errors, but it's not actually causing any problems in the game. So, uh, thank you very much to everybody that has made me aware of that one. I will. It's another one that's on my to-do list to go and look at. Uh, auto loads, those log grabs, uh, things like that, that are all quality of life improvements as far as I'm concerned. And they're all things that I want to be adding to my collection of mods. I will be doing it. Uh, Jamie Burt, you were telling me about the Glance mod or a version of the Glance mod that you found. Uh, I will be going to look at that one as well. I've been seeing people's comments. I haven't replied to very many comments yet. I'm hoping now, you know, we're sort of getting into the new year. It's the 2nd of January for me now. We're moving into the new year, and um, so I'm hoping that I will start having enough time to be able to go and deal with some of these things. Right. Let's grind to a halt right there. And we want to go... I'm just wondering... I'm thinking, actually, we can run the sea drill back down here and pick up these pallets and then go back up to the field if we want to get these pallets, if we need that seed. So we'll leave it like that, rather than worrying of doing it any differently. So I, oh, hang on, right. You're only on 4% at the moment. You're going along fairly steadily. What do I want from here? I want baling technology, and I want that one right there. So we're going to go with you. I don't like white foils. Uh, if we're not going to have black, I will go. I generally go for green. Uh, pink was done as breast cancer awareness, and it also puts uh, when you buy pink wrap from your dealer. It's certainly in the UK. I think for the whole of Europe at least. Uh, if you buy pink wrapper, it does actually uh, the percentage of the sales go to uh, breast cancer. So that is quite good. Personally, I generally go for black, and in my part of the country, uh, black is most often used. Right, I don't want to buy it, I just want to lease it. There. Some people do go for green. Uh, the reason you go for a, a lighter colour normally is because the black can overheat the bales. So you generally find in places that got a lot more sunshine that you won't use black, you use a different colour because otherwise it overheats the bales and that will spoil the silage. Um, not normally a problem where I am. Normally the biggest problem is getting just enough sunshine to be able to get the things inside the wrappers in the first place. And after that, yeah, if, if, if you get more sunshine after that, well, you're just doing well. You've, you've just gotten lucky. That is almost ready to do a full run on the field. So we're going to be doing full runs on over 7% now. And yeah, so then we're going to be doing full runs all the way across to here. And it'll get to, I reckon it'll be a, sort of a, a chunk here that it won't do. But looking at the amount we've got left, we are going to have to go and refill at least once. I don't think it's worth worrying about going and getting another machine, though. Um, like going and getting the seeds off overloader type thing. I think it's probably going to be just as fast to run back. And also the seed overloader thing costs money to run. It costs money to lease it. It costs money to run it. Uh, so I don't want to worry about that. So we're going to have this one, and I'm going to start heading back towards the farm. But that is just about all I've got time for. I'm going to have to go, because I'm actually about to go off to the dentist. Um, I have a horrible feeling that I'm going to be having a filling in one of my teeth. Which is really wonderful. It's, it's a really good way to like, finish up my day, isn't it? 
do a load of recording and then go to the dentist and have a filling. It's my own fault. I should have brushed more thoroughly. Um, well, actually, technically, it's not my fault. I've got an odd-shaped tooth that uh, I'm, I'm blaming that. That's my excuse. That is my excuse, and I stand by it, but still, you should brush your teeth. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.